The power of praise over criticism is a concept that has been widely debated for years. Many people believe that criticizing others is the only way to get them to change their ways. However, the truth is that praise can be far more effective than criticism. To understand this concept, we can look at the example of Al Capone. Despite his reputation as a violent and corrupt gangster, Capone believed that he was a good man at heart. This belief is not unique to Capone. Most people tend to believe that they are in the right, no matter what they have done. Therefore, when we criticize others, they often become defensive and try to justify their behavior. This can lead to lasting grudges and damaged relationships. Instead of criticizing others, we can use praise to inspire change. Everyone wants to feel valued and appreciated, and a few words of encouragement can go a long way. Praising others not only makes them feel valued, but it also inspires them to work harder and better. When people feel appreciated, they are more likely to take risks and push themselves out of their comfort zones. Additionally, praise helps to create warm relationships, which can lead to more effective communication and collaboration. Of course, there are times when we need to offer constructive criticism to help others improve. However, the key is to do so in a way that is constructive and helpful, rather than critical and damaging. When we focus on praising others and offering constructive feedback, we can build stronger relationships and achieve greater success in all areas of our lives. The first key point is that praise is significantly more effective in inspiring others to change. Imagine coming home from a long day of work, feeling tired and worn out. As soon as you open the door, you see your dog wagging its tail and jumping up to greet you. That feeling of joy and love is hard to replicate, but there are ways to make people feel the same way. Dogs make great companions because they show us affection and love without holding back. We can learn from them and apply the same principles to our interactions with others. The key is to make people feel interesting and important. You may be tempted to try to be interesting yourself, but this rarely works. Most people care about themselves and their own lives. Instead, you should focus on showing genuine interest in the other person. Smile at them and greet them enthusiastically. Remember their name and use it in conversation. Let them know that you are happy to be in their company. However, showing interest is not enough. You also need to make people feel important. A great example of this is a story about a landscaping inspector who complimented a client on his pedigree dogs. This led to a conversation about the client's passion for dog breeding and a warm professional relationship. In the end, the client even gave the inspector an expensive, purebred puppy as a parting gift. When you show people that you value their opinions and are genuinely interested in them, you will often receive unexpected rewards. Making people feel important is a powerful way to build relationships and create positive outcomes. So the next time you meet someone new, focus on making them feel interesting and important. Show them the same love and affection that your dog shows you, and you may be surprised at the results. During the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln had an old neighbor visit the White House to discuss his plan to emancipate enslaved people in the South. The conversation lasted for hours with Lincoln debating the pros and cons of every possible move. At the end of the evening, his old neighbor left without having given him any advice. As it turned out, what Lincoln needed most was a listener, not an advisor. We all value good listeners, but unfortunately, they can be hard to come by. We all like to talk about ourselves, but if we want to make friends and win people over, we need to take the opposite approach. Instead of monopolizing the conversation, we should encourage others to talk and listen attentively to what they have to say. If you are trying to make friends with a new colleague, 
Try asking them open-ended questions about their interests and hobbies. And be sure to pay attention and stay engaged in the conversation. If you appear uninterested or distracted, you are better off not encouraging them to talk at all. Theodore Roosevelt knew the value of engaging people on topics they find interesting. He would often study a book related to a guest's favorite hobby or interest before an important meeting so that he could have an informed and pleasant conversation with them. While you don't necessarily have to do that much research, you should still aim to share the conversation and show a genuine interest in what others have to say. When we take the time to listen to others and show an interest in their lives, we make them feel valued and important. We all want to feel heard and understood, and by providing that for others, we can build strong relationships and lasting friendships. So encourage others to talk, listen carefully, and show that you care. You'll be amazed at how quickly you can win people over. In a world where opinions clash and disagreements abound, it's important to know how to handle an argument. Winning an argument is not about proving the other person wrong or making them feel foolish. In fact, taking that approach is likely to do more harm than good. The first thing to remember is that arguments are rarely productive. If possible, it's best to avoid them altogether. However, if you find yourself in a situation where an argument is inevitable, there are ways to handle it with grace. The most important thing to keep in mind is to avoid making your opponent feel attacked. Telling someone that they are wrong is a surefire way to put them on the defensive. Instead, try to lead them to your conclusion gently. Ask questions and listen to their response. Be open to the possibility that you might be wrong and be willing to change your mind if the evidence warrants it. If you do find yourself in the wrong, be gracious about it. Admit your mistake and move on. It's better to own up to your error than to try to save face by sticking to a faulty argument. On the other hand, if you turn out to be right, don't gloat. Winning an argument is not about making the other person feel inferior. It's about arriving at the truth through respectful discourse. Ultimately, the goal of any argument should be to arrive at a deeper understanding of the issue at hand. If you approach the conversation with an open mind and a spirit of inquiry, you're more likely to come away with a productive outcome. Remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about learning and growing through respectful disagreement. The art of persuasion is a delicate skill, and Socrates was a master of it. His secret was to begin conversations by making assertions that everyone could agree on, then gently nudging them towards his point of view. By getting people in an affirmative state of mind, he was able to convince them of things they had never believed before. The key to successful persuasion is to avoid outright rejection. When someone says no, it becomes much harder to change their mind. This is because people tend to become emotionally invested in defending their opinions once they've declared them publicly. They don't want to look foolish or ignorant, so they cling to their beliefs even when they may be wrong. To avoid this problem, it's best to get people to arrive at your ideas on their own. Instead of trying to convince them that your point of view is correct, you can help them see things your way by asking the right questions. By getting them in an affirmative state of mind and gently leading them towards your conclusions, you can often get them to agree with you without them even realizing it. This strategy was used by Colonel Edward M. House when Woodrow Wilson was president. Rather than giving Wilson direct advice, the colonel would casually mention his own proposals in conversation. Over time, Wilson came to believe that these ideas were his own and embraced them wholeheartedly. This technique can be used in many different situations, from business negotiations to political campaigns. By getting people to agree with you from the start, you can lay the groundwork for successful persuasion. By gently leading them towards your conclusions, 
You can get them to see things your way without ever having to argue or fight. So the next time you need to persuade someone, remember the lessons of Socrates and Colonel House. Begin with what you know they will agree with, then gently lead them towards your point of view. With patience and persistence, you can achieve your goals without ever having to resort to conflict or confrontation. J. Mangum, a representative of an elevator maintenance company, had a daunting task of scheduling repairs at a hotel. Knowing that the repairs would take a full day, Jay approached the hotel manager, who refused to shut down the elevator for more than two hours. However, instead of outrightly rejecting the manager's proposal, Jay tried to understand the manager's perspective. He acknowledged the manager's desire to keep the guests satisfied, but emphasized that delaying the repairs could result in far lengthy repair work in the future. By understanding the hotel manager's concerns, Jay was able to convince him to agree to the eight-hour shutdown. Jay's approach of trying to see things from the other person's perspective helped him to win the manager's favor and generate goodwill. Sympathizing with others not only makes them feel good, but also helps manage frustration and impatience. Being empathetic and trying to understand other people's viewpoints can help in resolving tricky situations and winning people's trust. Empathy is especially crucial when tensions rise and tempers begin to fray. A simple sympathetic phrase can go a long way in making things right again. When we acknowledge people's perspectives and emotions, it helps build stronger relationships and people are more likely to open up to us. Being empathetic can also help us manage conflicts and improve our communication skills. When we take the time to understand why someone is behaving in a certain way, we can become more tolerant and patient with their actions. We can also tailor our communication style to suit their needs and preferences, making it easier to get our message across. Next time you find yourself in a difficult situation or conflict, Take a moment to try and understand the other person's perspective. Listen to their concerns and acknowledge their emotions. By doing so, you may be able to find a solution that works for both of you and build stronger relationships in the process. Ruth Hopkins, a fourth grade teacher from Brooklyn, New York, received a new class for the year and discovered that Tommy, the school's biggest troublemaker, was among her students. Despite his intelligence, Tommy had a history of being disobedient and causing problems in class, leaving Ruth wondering how she would handle him. Thankfully, Ruth had a plan. On the first day of class, she went around to each student and praised them for their unique qualities. When she got to Tommy, she looked at him and told him she had heard he was a natural-born leader and she was counting on him to make her class the best fourth grade class of the year. Tommy's behavior rapidly improved after that, as he strived to meet the high expectations that Ruth had set for him. As humans, we all love to receive praise, and we dislike letting down people who believe in us. Commending someone's reputation can tap into these facts and set a high benchmark for future performance. If you want someone to develop a certain characteristic, speak of them as though they already possess it. For instance, if you would like your child to be more generous, praise them for sharing with others and create an aspirational reputation for them as a generous and giving child. Dr. Martin Fitzhugh, a dentist, noticed that the standards of his office cleaner were slipping when a patient complained about a dirty metal cup holder. Rather than reprimanding her, he wrote her a gracious and appreciative note, thanking her for her hard work and commending her diligence. As a side note, he mentioned that he could pay her extra from time to time if she needed to work longer occasionally to take care of once-in-a-while things like the cup holder. The result was that the cleaner's work improved dramatically and she never had to work overtime again. Praising others and letting them know that you appreciate their work is not only generous but also an intelligent way to ensure that they try harder in the future.
If you make a habit of it and combine it with other tips, you can improve your relationships and make new friends more easily. To become influential, it's important to show empathy and understand others' perspectives. When people feel heard and valued, they are more likely to listen to your ideas and be influenced by you. However, if you're struggling to motivate a group of people, setting up a challenge or competition can be a great way to get them fired up. By recognizing top performers and publicly acknowledging their achievements, you can inspire healthy competition and encourage others to strive for excellence. This strategy works well in many different contexts from the workplace to sports teams and beyond. The key is to create clear criteria for success and to make sure everyone understands the rules of the competition. You might offer a prize for the winner, but sometimes the reward of recognition is enough to motivate people. The important thing is to create a sense of excitement and engagement that can help people tap into their natural competitive drive and perform at their best. Ultimately, whether you are trying to influence others or motivate a team, the key is to focus on building strong relationships and finding ways to tap into people's natural motivations. By understanding what drives people and showing that you value their contributions, you can become a powerful force for change and influence in any setting. If you enjoyed the video or learned something from it, Please help us by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. It would help us greatly in producing more content for you guys. Thank you.